Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss trigonometric integrals. Our first example is the indefinite integral of sine to the fourth power times cosine to the third power with respect to x. So to do this problem, there is a technique. The technique is whenever you have powers of sine and cosine, you want to save a copy of the one that's being raised to the odd power of, let me just say odd power. So in this particular case, because we have cosine cubed, we're going to save a copy of cosine. If you had sine cubed, you could do either. You could save a sine or save a cosine. So save a copy of, I want to say the odd one, the one that has an odd power. This technique will work as long as you have something to an odd power, okay? So let's go ahead and rewrite our integral. We have the integral of sine to the fourth of x. And then we're saving a copy of the cosine. So basically, I'm going to write cosine squared x here. And then over here, we have cosine x dx. And you can tell that this is correct because cosine x to the first power times cosine x to the second power, you add the exponents and you get the third power. So what's left here, this cosine x dx, is going to be our du, or at least part of our du. So because we're saving a copy of cosine, right, we're saving a cosine in this case, u is going to be the other one in this case. So u is going to be equal to sine x dx. And then so du is the derivative, so that's just cosine x dx. Now even though I've made the substitution here, you notice that there's still a problem, right? If I let u be sine x, we're going to have u to the fourth over here, but we still have this cosine squared. So this needs to be in terms of sine. And now what we're going to do, we're going to rewrite that piece. So this is sine to the fourth of x. And then cosine squared is really 1 minus sine squared x. And then this is cosine x dx. This, what I did here with the cosine squared, that's an identity. Easy trick. Cosine squared is 1 minus the other one squared. So it's 1 minus sine squared. Sine squared is 1 minus the other one squared. So it's 1 minus cosine squared. It's very, very powerful. So cosine squared, 1 minus the other one, so 1 minus sine squared. Now we're ready to make our substitution, which we've already pretty much worked out over here in blue on the right. This becomes the integral of, instead of sine, we have u, so it'll be u to the fourth, parentheses, and then 1 minus u squared, and then the cosine x dx is du. Really beautiful. Now we can distribute the u to the fourth, u to the fourth times 1 is u to the fourth, and then minus, and then u to the fourth times u squared is u to the sixth. And then we have our du here. When we integrate here, we simply use the power rule. So this is u to the fifth over 5, because we add 1 and divide, minus, and then u to the 7 over 7, and then plus c. And then u was sine x, so this is going to be sine to the fifth power of x over 5 minus sine to the seventh power of x over 7 plus c. Boom. So not a hard problem if you know how to do it, right? If you know to make that substitution at the beginning. So let's go over that again. You notice I didn't put equal signs. You can put equal signs. It's probably better to. Um, I'm just, I was taking like a top-down approach. Just, you know, the next step is the line below it. But you could certainly put equal signs there to make it look a little bit more formal. So the key is whenever you have powers of sine and cosine, if you have something to an odd power, save a copy of the one that's to an odd power, and then u is the other one. So if you memorize just what I put in quotes here, the save a copy to the odd power, in theory, you can come up with the rest in the problem. So it requires minimal memorization skills. There's formulas and books and stuff, and they basically say the same thing, except I'm saying it in words, which makes it, I think, a little bit better for human beings because you can think about this, right? Save a copy the odd power. Okay, let's do another example with different types of trig functions. Our next example is the indefinite integral of secant to the fourth power of x times tangent to the fourth power of x dx. The strategy here is as follows. So if you have an even power secant, I'll just say even secant, so secant to an even power, then you want to save a secant squared. So save secant squared x. Obviously, if it's like secant of 3x, you would save secant squared of 3x. 
So, and if it's an odd tangent, so an odd power of tangent, I'm just paraphrasing here everything. So odd tangent, then you would save a secant x tangent x. And again, if it was like tangent of 5x, you would save a secant of 5x tangent of 5x. So even secant save a secant squared, odd tangent save a secant tangent. Even secant save a secant squared, even secant save a secant squared, odd tangent save a secant tangent. Pretty easy to memorize, and if you memorize it, you will become super powerful, and you can do problems like this that look hard, but if you have this, um, you can do them. So we have secant to the fourth. I'm going to write secant squared x tangent to the fourth x and then we save to secant squared so that's going to go over here so here's our secant squared x dx and that secant squared dx is going to be um our du or at least part of our du right it won't always exactly be du sometimes you have to do a little bit of math after you make your substitution but for the most part it's going to be the core piece so and you can tell that this is correct because secant squared times secant squared is secant to the fourth power so now we'll make our substitution. You might say, what's our substitution? Well, if we saved a secant squared, just think about it. What's the derivative? What derivative is going to give you secant squared? What function has a derivative at secant squared? Well, tangent. Right, we'll let u be tangent, and then the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. Dx. So by memorizing just this piece, save as secant squared, you can kind of reason that, oh, u must be tangent because its derivative is secant squared. So you can make that leap without having to memorize everything and fill your brain with a lot of knowledge that you don't really need because you can come up with it using your mind if you memorize just the basics. So now we're still in a bad situation because we have tangent here, tangent to the fourth, but we have this extra secant squared. So what we're going to do is write that as 1 plus tangent squared. So that's an identity. 1 plus tan squared is secant squared. That's just one you memorize. And then here we have the rest of it, tangent to the fourth, secant squared x, dx. So just for memorization, secant squared is 1 plus tan squared. Now we're in a great place because we have only tangents here. So this is 1 plus u squared, u to the fourth. And then this whole piece here, this secant squared x, dx, is simply, that's our du. So just like before, now we simply distribute the u to the fourth. So we have u to the fourth plus u to the sixth, du. And we can integrate this. And using the power rule, we add 1 and divide, so u to the 5 over 5. Now it's easy. Plus add 1 and divide, so u to the 7 over 7, plus c is equal to. And then our u was tan x, so this will be tangent to the fifth of x over 5 plus tangent to the 7 of x over 7 plus c. And that would be the final answer. So we've taken a problem that looks really hard and hopefully made it easier. And like always, I always don't write the equals, so I'm going to go ahead and put those there just to make it look a little bit better. So the key point in this problem is whenever you have powers of secant and tangent, if you have an even power of secant, you save a secant squared. Odd power of tangent, you save a secant tangent. In the second case, by the way, if you save a secant tangent, then you would let u be secant because its derivative is secant tangent. In any case, just memorize these things, and in theory, you'll be able to do most of the problems. Not all, but most. This video has covered most of the stuff uh, for trig integrals. Not everything, but most. So hopefully, this will help you, and hopefully, you've learned some math. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out other videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck, and take care.